Why haven't uh, you addressed the issue of uh, the gay documentary? Guess is homosexual. I knew then this guy is gay. Any woman that's climaxing is becoming a man. I can't help it. But I don't have that erotic oh, love, right. but I know what you're saying. <laughs> you have been with a black man. Instead, Jesse ended up grooming me. After having sex with him, he told the man, now you're born again. I actually saw him kissing him on the phone. This guy is, like, disgusted by women. I mean, his victims were vulnerable people from broken homes. There's some people born evil. If the mother is angry, yeah. I ask myself, why am I so afraid of my mother? He liked a tweet from your daddy only fans. Oh, are you a homosexual too? Oh, are you oh, a homosexual too? Michelle is a first-time caller out of Detroit. Michelle, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. How are you today? All this well, Michelle. Thanks for calling. I, I had a question. I'm just kind of confused. Um, why haven't uh, you addressed the issue of uh, the gay documentary? Um, it's not concerning to me. She said she was a liberal. She was having doubts. She lied. What a wicked woman. Do you love the homosexuals? No, I do not. I hate homosexuals, and I wish that they would all die. And why do you hate them? Because the Bible portrays them as violent predators from start to finish. And if we look at reality, they are violent predators. They are recruiters. They're not reproducers. They're recruiters. You a sellout, brother, and a sellout human being, and you try to put perpetrate being a fraud in the name of God. Amazing. You so you, game, so this you're is, supposed to be a minister and you're supposed so to be a counselor. To, Tom, and you know what? That Tom, fat Tom, you got on there Tom, who ain't got nothing. I noticed that whenever the children of the lie, whether it's the so-called Christians or non-Christians, when they want to promote evil, they always use the blacks to promote evil. And blacks, because they hate white people and they are not of God, they are too willing to promote evil. I'm Growing up, I never saw anything like that, and it's just amazing to see it today. Yeah, well, it's it's terrible the way that they've been weaponized against us. I think it's pretty obvious why Charlie Kirk had Rob Smith on the stage. Rob Smith was there to be the black gay veteran who would shield Charlie Kirk from criticism from the left. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's really a substitute for moral courage. Instead of Charlie Kirk saying, I'm a Christian, I oppose this, I'm going to stand up for God, he wants to get a black homosexual on the stage so that he could say, oh, oh, see, look, I'm complicit in evil, and the left won't attack him, right? That, that's the idea. You are the biggest hypocrite. What's your okay. question? You sit here. My question is, why are you such a big hypocrite? Uh, because I can't help okay. it. Okay. I can't yeah, help no. it. On his Twitter page, as you can see, you know, he, he has all of his likes here, and, and then if you scroll down a little bit more... You see that he liked a tweet from your daddy only fans xxl boy um and basically this is the video of two men having gay sex and it is censored <laughs> he liked this on his public account for his show <laughs> this is hilarious this is hilarious and he left that liked tweet up for hours it was there for hours and immediately after he realized that he liked that tweet he set his account to private probably because he's going to scroll through and make sure that he didn't like any other gay porn tweets because he maybe thought that he was using his throwaway account not logged into his public account so you know like i'm not like an expert with social media at all whenever i use it i'm like just really one two three those simple things but over the years, I've had friends of mine who told me, who would tell me, social media is mean. They put nasty things on their on your YouTube channel. And so I had a friend tell me once, I won't mention his name, but and he a real popular social media person. We were at a conference once, and he was telling me that, and he was like, tick. And I had never seen him be tick. <laughs> I was like, what the? I just started out for the most part. Not just started out, but he was saying that these radical homosexuals were putting nasty sex stuff on his uh, 
or his computer or his social media thing, and he didn't. He wanted to know why. Why were they doing that? And he would find himself clicking on it, not realizing that uh, how he was seeing it or something like that. But he was sick. And, but so apparently, according to my social media people, they were doing it to me too. These na- nasty homosexuals are putting their nasty, gross sex stuff on the onto your social media, and they set it up to look like you're just looking at something else, or they make comments. And if you don't know what you're doing, apparently you will find yourself looking at. It. I have no, been saying have for that. I've been saying for a long time that homosexuals who are pushing this know that they are wrong inside within themselves they have guilt and they it, they think that if they can convince the world that homosexuality is normal then the guilt would go away but i believe that the guilt would still be there because it's wrong even if everybody says that it's right but you're already there that's you you've diagnosed this whole thing absolutely correctly that's this this is a process by which to get rid of guilt by killing one's conscience and the only way you can successfully do it is if you get everyone to agree to the rationalization. You universalize it. I also heard that you have had the experience of having sex with other men. Maybe, man. We're going real deep here, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I mean, apparently it's out there on the Internet somewhere. A lot of stuff out there on the Internet, yeah. Did you say that? Yeah, I'd, I'm, I'd say I'm bisexual, yeah. So you have sex with men? Yeah, sometimes. First of all, what's the purpose of putting that out there like that? Why let anyone know that if you did that? So that I can come on here and have wonderful conversations about it with you, Jesse. <laughs> Nothing makes me more happy than talking about my sex life with a bunch of conservatives on the radio. I love it. But what was the purpose of you letting it be known that you have your woman has sex with other men and you have sex with other women and men and she does too with other men? Why put that out there like that? Why did you tell anyone that? Um, I'm pretty open with everything that I do, and I think that people should be more comfortable with the things they do. So rather than keep things kind of hidden and pretend that I live a very traditional lifestyle, I like to talk about the non-traditional. And so is your church a homosexual church or something? No, we're not a homosexual church. We're about 50-50. We got 50% LGBT, 50% straight families. Amazing. And do the straight family know that the rest of those folks are homosexuals? I'm a very gay pastor, Jesse, so I think they all know. Oh, you a homosexual too? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And how, when did you become a homosexual? Uh, when I was born out of my mother's womb. And why did you decide to become one? I didn't decide, you know. I think God decided that one for me. How do you know you were that way when you were born out of your mother's womb? Well, because my earliest memories of being attracted to people are being attracted to men. You what? I'm a homosexual. You I a have homosexual? to be in favor of it, yeah. Are you really? Mm-hmm. And what does that mean to be a homosexual? What, what is that? I'm a, just like you, uh, Reverend. I love all people, uh, uh, every single one of them. But so. you love them in a sexual way, right? Oh, not the kids. But yeah, absolutely. I love folks. And so you're a homosexual? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I like everyone, men, women. How did you become that way? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I was raised pretty well loving parents. Couldn't have been them. I have just figured around 15, 16, I like all, all sorts of folks. You take anything that comes along? I have to find them hot. But uh, yeah, there are lots of hot folks all over the place. I think, by the way, you look wonderful today. So I are think you, you liking me right now? Oh, oh no, not like that. I just think that you're fantastic. You're aged wonderfully. You have a flawless beard going on. You're well haircut. I think that you're a phenomenal example. Uh, if you were into men, you'd have your pick of the cut. Let me tell you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Have you ever been with a black man? Uh, I have. You been with? You had sex with a black man? Oh uh, yeah. And is it true that once you go black, you can't go back? Ha. Erotic love. You, when you really want someone. I mean, you might love them and, and have kindness to them, but you also want to possess them. <laughs> but, but I don't have that erotic no, love, right. but I know what you're saying. <laughs> but that's not the kind of love I'm talking about. <laughs> Do you accept that those people that who have been able to overcome it, and would that, does that convince you that maybe it is not from God and it's something that you can overcome? Because they completely put aside that, that, uh, that it's possible to overcome, that they're born that way. Well, for many people, many people have tried for decades to change their sexual orientation, and it has not worked. But for many, for it people, has. For many, but they have, and you, you guys are not accepting of that. You are no, not I'm loving of that. Some people have different experiences. Some people experience what's called more sexual fluidity in terms of their sexual orientation. But and the there's nothing wrong with that. But Matthew, are but, you loving of those people who have managed to overcome homosexuality? 
Yes, I have. And you accept the fact to invalidate their stories. And you accept the fact that it is possible to overcome it. Well, it also depends on how we're defining overcome. No, I'm asking. It's a yes or no question, actually. It's it's not. There's no. It's not a trick question. Do you accept the fact that some people have experienced complete overcoming of homosexuality? What do you mean by that? Like, what do you, do you what mean, mean what do I mean by that? It's just a straight question. It's a yes or no be, question. That's all like Bill Clinton. It all depends on what you mean by sex. You don't know what it means to completely overcome something? That their behavior changed, but their attractions didn't change. And a few small other number of other people will say that all their attractions changed as well. And so I was just asking you to clarify which one you were talking about. I, I'm talking about those people who were once homosexual and had homosexual relationships with other men and now are married with children and uh, they've completely overcome it. And by overcome, you mean that they no longer experience any same-sex attractions? Absolutely. Okay, well, I mean, I wouldn't deny that that's a possibility. I would just say that for Exodus International, which was the main ex-gay group, they shut down last year, and, and the guy who run it said that more than 99% of the people he was working with who were trying to change their same-sex attraction could not do it. And so even if there are some people who can, I don't think that that can be a universal answer to the question well, that because there are because, so many other people who can't. That was because he didn't know what he was doing to help the people overcome. Do you I, know Alan I, Chambers? Yeah, because I know. you shouldn't say I, something like that. Again, you're speaking out of complete no, ignorance. No, I, I do know him. He did not know what he was doing. Former Bond House manager, 50-year-old Robert Santner, alleges he witnessed similarly strange behavior in 2021 between Jesse and current Bond producer James Hake. What I witnessed him, him and Jesse, were hugging and hugging each other intensely, uh, rubbing up, rubbing each other's shoulder down stuff. And he came to a point where I actually saw him kissing him on the cheek. I just want to say, like right off the bat, if Hake ends up being gay, I, this is the most called thing in the universe. This dude is repulsed by women. He is. This guy is like existentially disgusted by women. Um. You know, I mean, it might be all, yeah, I don't know. The, the, Hake, Hake has, in all the people I've seen and talked to, Hake has quite possibly the most internally destructive understanding of their own sexual interests and desires of any person I've, I've just ever even been aware of, you know? I don't even know how much of it has played up, but yeah. And that other boyfriend, the two other boyfriends you got, this as well. You ass n****. Oh, goodbye. These stories first came to light when Jesse's former co-host and alleged decade-long gay lover exposed him. 61-year-old Patrick Rooney has known Jesse for nearly 30 years, dating back to roughly 1992. Everybody know Patrick Rooney, one of the smartest white men on this side of heaven. Um, I was molested as a boy uh, by another boy. Uh, and I was probably about eight years old. I mean, I didn't write it down in my diary or whatever. So, you know, there's no diary when you're eight years old. Uh, so probably about right around eight, I'm looking, I'm looking at photos of myself and just kind of get, my best estimate is I'm probably around eight years old. So I had something you call it in psychological or spiritual terms, kind of maybe like you get like a, a weird attraction or something to what traumatized you fast forward to when I was an adult and I was still not quite over the stuff, although I had not ever acted on it. I met Jesse and Jesse, one of the first things he did is ask me if I was a homosexual. And um, he started to counsel me. And I, the understanding was he was going to counsel me and help me overcome any issues that I had so I could come back to the self that I was when I was born and I was free. Instead, Jesse ended up grooming me. And later we ended up having a over a 10 year period of sexual, totally wrong sexual relationship. Let me tell you how bad it, it was. Jesse married Pat and his wife. He was the minister that presided over the wedding. And later, he preyed upon the husband uh, had a homosexual relationship with the husband of the of the woman uh, the, the woman's husband whom whom he married. After having sex with him, he told he told the man, now you're born again. I was a Bond member. Uh, Jesse Lee Peterson has a 
organization called Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. And I was there almost from the beginning, uh, 20 years, uh, from uh, 92 till about 2012, I was involved with Bond and I left. And Jesse's latest known purported victim. I started going to Bond around May 2020. It's a thing to all the people that want proof. I, I don't want to remember this stuff. You get me? Like, I didn't want to be like, hold on, let me, Jesse, you, you're going to do this to me? Let me record real quick. This is like, yeah, let's do it. Like, that's weird. Uh, I wasn't even thinking that to expose him would be to expose myself. Like, and I wasn't ready for that. Someone asked the question of how, how can you say he pulled down your pants? Like, and to that defense, you made me remember, thanks to whoever left that comment, because you made me remember Um, at this point. I was already working out like consistently because I was like, you know, motivated. I was like feeling on top of the world. I was working out consistently trying to make myself stronger. So, so was Jesse. So I would take off my shirt and he would look at my, my, my body like, oh man, like, and I would do it because, oh, Jesse, let me show you the work I've been doing. Look, look, check this out. I'm not proud of that. I probably shouldn't have done that, but hey man, whatever. And then at one point I would tell him, oh, I'm working on squats. And then he's like, oh, let me see your legs. So I, at first it started with like pulling up, you know, my pants, like from the, from the, from the, what, the boot up to the leg. But then it became, oh, take off your pants. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna just pose right here. And by the way, the whole time the, the, the door is locked. So no one saw this stuff. Um, so th that's what led to the moment where it first happened, I had, I believe I had taken off my pants and then it was just me sitting in like my boxers and then him kneeling in front of me because I was about to, oh, and he would do this pretty often where I would want to pull up my pants, but he would be like, no, no, don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean, Jesse? Like, stop, man, I'm trying to pull up my pants. He's like, no, no, come on. Like, And he would just do his little laugh like, <laughs> And then, but then that's what, that's when he did it. Right. Um, and then I went into the silent prayer and first he pulled down my boxers and then he starts rubbing it and he's like, Hey, uh, why is it getting hard? I'm like, why are you asking this? Like, of course it's going to get hard if anybody touches it. Like, come on, it's a, it's a penis, man. Come on. And then he would, he would laugh and then, and then he did it. Right. And then I, I, I'm just shocked also, but I'm also letting him do it, um, which is a, a sh shameful for me to admit. But I mean, he's he, he's telling me all this spiel of like, look, Samuel, I know you're like dealing with this. And you don't know what to do, but I just want to warn you not to tell anybody your business. Anything you've been through, don't tell anybody because they're just going to turn on you like they turn on everybody like. If you notice anybody that shares all their vices, all that happens to them is that they uh, that they get turned on, you know? So I'm like, look, Jesse, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to tell people, but all I know is I'm done. I'm done with Bond. I'm done with you. I want nothing to do with you ever again. Don't ever come to my house ever again. And I also told him, look, Jesse, I remember the, the day that you... Um, that after the day after it first happened, I called you like scared and, and like confused. And you told me that Satan told you that I was gay. And after that day, I would just question myself, always question myself. I never, ever questioned Jesse, which is another shameful thing. And it goes to the cult personality, like the cult psychology that you don't question the person that is causing damage to you. You question yourself. And you, yeah, Jesse says, don't put me on a pedestal, but he he sets it up to where you do put him on a pedestal. So anyways, what I told him is like, look, I never questioned you, but what I should have asked you, uh, I should have asked you if you're gay. And he's like, no, 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 no. Before I even said it, he said, no, 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 no. And then I knew then th this guy is gay. Another alleged victim was Trayvon Chapman who in 2015 told his friend, now 43-year-old Armand Martikian, that Jesse molested him. 
the first thing came out of his mouth uh, that Jess is homosexual. After this encounter, Armand began questioning his own relationship with Jesse. And then I had a flashback. Back in the day, when I was in a private counseling, uh, he kind of gestured me, let me see down there, uh, pointing at my, referring to my, you know, down there as in my privates. Not knowing what, what it was about, I'm at late, very late teens at that moment, you know, like kind of got tricked into it, put my pants forward where he kind of looked at it. Oh, you hey, said, so you said. Tell anybody to shut up. I'm not your bitch. Yeah. You act like my bitch. No, you act like no, my bitch. You act like okay. my bitch. You're complaining. A church militant uh, in Detroit. And what surprised me about them a little bit was that I grew up a, a Catholic my whole life. I mean, I was Catholic. My parents were Catholic. They were Democrats. And, you know, I grew up uh, in the 60s and 70s. And we, we were kind of on the liberal side of things. They had already gotten rid of the Latin mass. They had already uh, gotten rid of some of the more hardcore elements uh, in the church, but they also started to lose their morality. And the people at Church Militant are really into bringing back the old morality of the Catholic Church. I'm not a Catholic anymore, uh, and I probably never will be. Uh, I don't subscribe to all of the things that they believe in, but I do respect them for the morality and their adherence to biblical principles. Some of the people that were um, working on our side of things were kind of looking, where are we going to put this story? Who wants to, who is going to put out this story about Jesse Lee Peterson? Who's going to believe it? Who's going to uh, get behind it? Who's going to give us a chance? And um, Jesse, it so, just so happened, was doing an interview with Church Militant. Um, and uh, one of the people working with us sent them some information about what was going on here. The guy kind of wiped the floor with Jesse. After the show was done, after they did all their taping for the night, they all gathered around and looked at it and said, wow, we didn't know at the time that these guys, these guys um, investigated Catholic priests who were molesting boys, or at least alleged to, and some of them, I believe, shown to be molested. Um, so we had no idea. But afterwards, they were looking at it, and they were blown away because they liked Jesse. They had brought him. They had just interviewed him. They gave him a tough interview. The last interview they did with him, but prior to that, they were loving him because they had a lot of agreement on the on the right side of things. They had a lot of agreement on conservative principles. Jesse appears to have used every dirty trick in the book to silence him, allegedly trying to have Francis arrested for violating an unserved restraining order. And they're calling us dangerous, and there's nothing on us. We don't have any heavy overcoats. We're not wearing anything that looks like uh, we may be concealing something. We just have jackets on. He couldn't even tell the police that he actually saw a firearm. Otherwise, when they did search me, they would they they would find that he's lying. So he was just saying, like, he keeps putting his hands in his pocket and acting erratic. And I think he may have a gun then. And so they came out for that, handcuffed me and uh, searched me. I, I, I actually gave him permission to do that. I don't think they were going to do that. I, ex I, I wrote in my response, I expected them to call the police and serve me with restraining orders. Jesse has lied before, pulling the same antics with Fabian Asensio. Yeah, him, him and, uh, well, Patrick didn't actually, Patrick didn't lie, Patrick Rooney, when he went there the first time 10 years ago or something with Fabian, they did the same restraining order thing. And uh, Fabian was never fired from his job when he worked at Bond, he was never fired by Jesse. And um, that's what Jesse said in his restraining order his temporary restraining order request. And that was a lie. And Patrick backed up the lie by staying quiet. And at one point, Patrick actually corrected Jesse and said, no, he hasn't threatened us or anything like that. And then that forced Jesse to recant. And then the judge asked him, after the judge asked him a second time, did, you know, did Fabian uh, uh, do anything violent or make any violent, um, you know, threats or anything? And he's like, no. And so... The official document we sent in to them. Does it look official? Yeah. See, that's all the words. If you freeze frame it and, and blow it up, you'll be able to read it. But who wants to do that? Okay. And then finally, this last piece of paper is the order, the written order that the judge said at the bottom, petitioner's request for civil harassment restraining order is denied. <laughs> You're rejected. 
the court finds petitioner has failed to sustain their burden of proof. All temporary orders, if any, are dissolved. This is why I was able to go to the post office and have a friendly chat with Jesse. Sex was definitely and only designed for the marriage bed. It was a gift from it God. Just to make a baby. The, no, what? No. If it okay, was just, I got a question okay. for you on it that. should be just bam, bam, thank you, ma'am, go Th to sleep. Then answer this question then. I need you to answer a question, yes. Jesse. Why did God give male and female, as long as everything is generally okay, you know, health-wise, right. why did he also give them uh, what's the word? The ability to, to have enjoy, pleasure. Have pleasure in the midst of marriage. If it's just wham, bam, thank yeah, you. Well, him having enough. pleasure no, 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 hold is on. necessary. Hear me. You know, he has to, him, him, him getting to his point is necessary if it's yeah, just pleasure. procreation. If it's just about why procreation, did God give us, why did God why give, men and, have, God yeah. give men and question. women pleasure if he it's just wham, bam, thank you, man? Because he allowed the fall to happen so that they could wake up in emotional state. Because if they didn't have that emotion, they would have perfect peace, and men and women would not, men and women would not be attracted to each other in a sexy way, right? And so God didn't want to keep making man with his hand. At first, he was making from the dirt of the earth, but he wanted, he came up with this idea: I'm gonna let it come through the woman, and the only way that that can happen, he had to allow them to turn away from him, so they would not have peace, and in that state of anger, they have a false sense of love because anger will wait to your sexual nature, right? So they have false sense of love, and once they get married, make all the babies they can make, then they should stop having sex and return to the father. Why does the woman have pleasure then? What, was, what would be the point? Because if she she's knew her, angry. She, she, so anger, she has, ple she, her pleasure her, comes out of her anger? Yes, it's for her ego. Because women get an ego drive. <laughs> when the man is attracted to her, she control him. She knows it, right? And so if no, I'm talking her down nitty-gritty, doing the bumpity bump, yeah. pole getting it in. She has a climax. Right. Why? Because, it's unnecessary if it's just for procreation. Because she's been turned away from God and her anger awakened that emotional and that false emotion to make feel her like love. Have a I got one more question for you then. Well, and, oh, oh, let me tell you that. I oh, just, no. A woman is not supposed to be having a climax. Any woman that's but having a climax is becoming a man. That's why a woman has to make herself do it, where a man does it naturally. Climax, and that's the word? Yeah, right. Any woman that's climaxing, that's the right word, right, James? I know you want to know. You're a virgin. <laughs> virgin don't know anything. <laughs> Any woman that's climaxing, climaxing is becoming a man because it's not normal for women to do that. Right. I think it's a, I think it's a lie. I don't think they do that. Oh, you don't think they do? No. You think they're pretending? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. That could be possible. You think when women act like they're doing that, they're lying? Uh, I never thought about it, but you you never know. Yeah, because they would be making a man think he's really doing an amazing job. <laughs> yeah, I think they, I think it feels good, but uh, yeah, the the climaxing part, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, women don't let. I don't know if y'all doing that or not, but. Don't even try, because if it were natural, you'd naturally do it. But the fact you're trying to make something happen, you're becoming a man. The man is turning you into a man, a fake man, not but a man. Kind of man. <laughs> right, not a real man, a drag queen man. Perversion. Yeah. You mean, is your that's wife what you your mean, partner? No. Are you saying that your wife is your partner? Yeah, yeah, my wife's my partner. I think Are you're you my married partner. To a man? I, mean, I think that's... <laughs> I love that. Uh, I am not married to a man. So I if you're not married to a married man, to men, why are you calling have... your wife your partner instead of your wife? Well, be... well, that's just a confusing question for me to even know how to respond to. Well, um, why, if be... you're not married to a, a so-called man, why are you calling your wife your partner mm. rather than your wife? The homosexuals, the radicals, they use the word partner because they're trying to fit in well, into well, the I... norm. They try to fit an app norm into a norm. No, um, okay. I, I and why totally is your wife your that, partner but... and not your wife? But you're not even the head of your wife. Um, let's go back to Kristen. You don't have one, so okay. Let's Kristen. Go. I've looked at the research behind this, and I've looked at the reporting mm -hmm. and some of the stuff that they haven't felt able to release yet. I've also looked at some of the testimony from people who, um, but I've, 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 you know, I've kind of looked at the notes of this, and I know the reporter who did it in quite, uh, in person. Right. Um, I, I know him personally, mm -hmm. and I know. So he's credible. You you, and, you would vouch for him. Yeah, he is. Okay. 
a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a good guy. He's a great actually. I mean, he's a, he's a mm. big. You know, he's a. Um, so he's, what, what would you say to the think, people? Because oh, I'm reading the chat. Like, I guess a lot of people are saying, yeah. well, there wasn't you know completely clear evidence. It's kind of just he said, she said. I mean, I do find it weird. Like, you know, you. Uh, obviously people know you know are former homosexual so like I, does JLP like have all these like signs to him like to me I, I never thought that in a million years and why are these guys coming out and saying like oh yeah I had gay sex with JLP you know like that's kind of a weird thing to allege right I don't think well I don't think it's new um, people will know that Jesse removed reverend um, and the word pastor from his website some time ago when a lot mm. of his black congregation started to leave. Okay. And they left, um, they've been leaving over the last couple of years because of this. Uh, and this isn't actually much of a secret to those people who mm. spend a lot of time around around Jesse, mm -hmm. um, especially after that guy started posting all the blog posts. Um, I'm satisfied having looked into this, and I don't say this with any pleasure at all, mm. that he is homosexual or at least bisexual mm -hmm. i'm satisfied that his behavior rises to the level of predation i mean his victims were vulnerable people from broken homes they're people who are trying to get clean from drugs mm -hmm. uh far, you know fatherlessness um you know people who were beaten to within an inch of their lives by their dads and he's preying sexually on young vulnerable men and has been for decades who are in this house that's supposed to be a sanctuary for them and that's the bit of it that makes me feel really uncomfortable and if you were thinking of um you know, because uh, because you adore him so much, and I did, and mm -hmm. part, part of me still does. But if you're thinking about, you know, whether you can turn a blind eye to this, I, I, the bit of it that makes me deeply uncomfortable um, is the fact that he knew that these people were from vulnerable um, and broken backgrounds. He knew that they would not make, you know, the the best. I guess witnesses, or the, or, or they could be easily dismissed, right. and he used that information to approach them sexually. It's been going on for decades. Some of them were in their late teens. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's uh, deployed law enforcement and restraining orders against at least one of them. He's clearly unrepentant, and the behavior, according to the guy that ran his his house up until last year, goes on to this mm -hmm. day. I mean, we're talking about what 30, 40 years of this behavior. Are some people born evil? Were some people, if the mother was mad while being pregnant, that can happen, yes. Because she can pass that spirit into her children while in the womb. Are some people born homosexual? If the mother is angry, yes, that can happen in the womb. Because it's all spiritual. And so you can be spiritually traumatized while in the womb. The spirit of homosexuality is of their father, the devil. It's not them, the person. It's the spirit that made a home in them, and it came from them overreacting to some sort of a situation in life, whether it's from someone uh, uh, messing with them when they were kids or overreacting to an angry mother because you become like what you hate. Most men and women, boys and girls, don't hate their fathers. They yearn for their fathers. They, their soul is yearning for the father, but they hate the mother because it's the mother who has passed on her anger to them by being either aggressive or pushy or too weak and cunning and stuff like that. Uh, so they resent the mother. And that's why, and when you have anger in your heart like that, the nature of anger is fear. Uh, the children of anger is fear and doubt and worry, insecurity, suicidal thoughts, depression, uh, overeating, oversexing, overlying. I had to, when I had to go and, and forgive my mother and face her. I was like 38 or so, and the closer I got to the house where she was staying, the fear would just overtake me. And the reason I had the fear it was because I had the anger, and in anger you have no love. Satan is your father, and in him there's nothing but destruction, which means fear and doubt and all that. And so my, my, my mother came to L.A. to visit her sister. And I knew I had to go and forgive her because God said, when you forgive others, he'll forgive you. I'm driving over there. Fear would just overtake me. By the time I got there and got out of the car, I could barely walk up. It was about three or four steps I had to walk up, maybe even less than that. I could barely get up the steps. And I, I asked myself, why am I so afraid of my mother? I'm a grown man. 
And I realized it was the way that she had acted, treated me when I was growing up, and I resented her for it. And you become like what you hate. You become subject to what you hate, and you're afraid of what you hate. Um, I am a homosexual, and that I cannot deny that that is the part of my nature. And it's something I've always known about myself ever since I was a young kid. And um, I used to struggle with it when I was younger. I'm 30 years old now, by the way. You're 30, okay. I used to struggle with it when I was younger. And I came to terms with it. And, you know, I feel okay about that and myself. But I find it hard to relate to other gay people. It's like, you know, anything that you've covered about going to pride parades in West Hollywood or whatever, those are most, most gay, most gay people are like that. And I cannot relate to them. And I find most of them to be, uh, immoral people. So I feel kind of (laughs) stuck in between two worlds where the people that, want me to identify with them. I do not want to identify. And then other people, a lot of other people don't like gay people. So 